Hi everybody, Indiana Caver here. I'm out on vacation this week in the middle of Lawrence County, Indiana, if you know where that's at. Sort of out in the middle of nowhere. One of the things I did bring with me though was some amateur radio equipment and I uh, want to get that up and running. So what I have here is an MCOM Products antenna. MCOM is either out of business or they're not making these antennas anymore, but this one's pretty nice. It's made for emergency communications. It's not permanent install. comes in a nice bag and it covers several HF bands as well as VHF and UHF. So, let me get started. Okay, here's the bag. It's pretty nice, uh, pretty, pretty weatherproof but not waterproof. Uh, it could sit outside and maybe the, the back of the truck if it's not raining too hard, but it's a, a pretty nice bag, sort of the OD green. So, unzip this and there's several th different things in here. Uh, so I've got a couple runs of coax in here. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head how many feet they are, but I usually find they're not long enough. So I've got a couple additional 50 foot runs that I bring with me. And uh, you have to remember the barrel connectors for those. If you forget those, you're, you're not going to be talking with, with that. Um, it has a, uh, the top to the antenna. And this actually has a, a roll pin that's missing right here. I need to get a roll pin and put it in there, but it hasn't uh, interfered with anything yet. I, in high winds, it might be a problem. So I'll probably find something to take care of that here this weekend. Uh, got the mast. The mast will be setting up here. Then it also has four different antenna elements. Uh, two of these go together. One's uh, for 80 meter and one's for 40 meter. And uh, so they're paired up. And it says, it, or 75 meter, I'm sorry. One's uh, 75 meter and one's for 40 meter. So these get set in there. Then there's also additional elements that go onto there. And these are telescopic, telescopic pieces uh, right here. So the idea behind this antenna is you put up the 40 meter or the 75 meter, whichever is uh, nearest where you're going to be talking, and then you can telescope these out to tune your antenna. So once you find the frequency that you're going to be operating on, and again, this is more geared towards emergency operations, so you'd probably have a state frequency that you might be on or something like that. So once you tune it up, you're good to go. These, uh, these are pretty nice, and these just screw into the end of your, of your element here. It forms a, a dipole antenna uh, that fits on right here. So you have two, two coaxes coming out here. So this is where your HF antenna is at, and up here is where you're going to put in the elements for the, uh, the VHF UHF antenna. A couple of other things we got in the bag. Um, these are sandbags. You can fill with sand if you need to uh, use those to guy your tower off. You have stakes uh, to, to put your guys into the ground with. It even comes with a little mallet, or came with a little mallet. Uh, some uh, straps for the sandbags if needed. I've never used the sandbags before. And then it's got a uh, your guy your guy strings here that uh, fit to the top of your tower. And then once you undo all these things, your uh, clip here clips right into your stake or your sandbag, whichever you're using. And then uh, there's also elements like this. For the uh, for the VHF and UHF antenna in here. All right. Oh, and it usually uh, it sort of goes nicer if you have a couple of people to help you out, uh, or two people setting this up. But it's just me and some dogs, and they're never any use. Damn dogs. All right. Let's get started with the next stuff. All right. I thought I'd show how these this top section goes together. Got a little. Thing right there, you push, push button, it snaps back out. These are your uh, guy strings, guy, uh, guy cable, and then the top piece goes in. Same thing, pops back out. This is where the dipole comes off at. This is where the VHF UHF antenna comes out at. And then there's two more of these sections, so it goes about 15 feet in the air. Or so.
Okay, so I got my stake set into place and so my guys, guy wires are initially up enough to hold it in place. This is where it becomes handy to have uh, two people working, one to hold and one to assemble. But I've done it before by myself and, uh, and it can be done. Uh, just easier to have a couple people. So I've got my 40 meter dipole set up here. It's ready to go on. So uh, it has three, four ground elements and three uh, transmitting elements. And this is sort of interesting. It just sort of fits in there and you find the notch and then it locks, you turn it and it locks into place. I had never seen anything like this before I uh, got this antenna. Then I turn it, give it a little turn, and locked in. And then the ground elements just screw into place. Pretty straightforward there. Okay, so there's the all the whole antenna from uh, this tip here. Now these uh, antenna telescopic antenna here isn't stretched out, and then over here on the other side it's not pulled out. In fact, it goes a little off screen. Uh, so there's your dipole for your HF, and then up here is your uh, transmitting elements for UHF, VHF, and as well as the ground plane elements down here. And uh, at this point is when you want to make sure that you go ahead and attach your coax. So you can see the uh, coax leads coming off right there. I've got my coax already stretched out. I did forget one of the pieces. It's this piece here. It uh, fits into the bottom just like the other stuff fits together. And it gives you a point there to jab in the ground. Uh, if you're in a gravel driveway or something, it might stick in a little better. All right, here we go. All right, that wasn't too bad. I know you guys probably didn't get to see much exciting there. Sorry about that. But uh, there we got it in the ground and it uh, goes all the way up. So it looks like I'm at a uh, north-south orientation. So I'll go ahead and a little rotor by Armstrong, if you know what I mean. And And uh, there you go, do a little direction finding, figuring where the signal's at. So now I just have to run the coax on into the, into the shack there and uh, I'll be ready to go.